lovely friend, welcome back to the podcast episode. So I'm going to be diving in on some spring art ideas that use uh, choice-based mediums and approaches. Um, And that way you can be planned ahead, but also, again, we're using flexible mediums or even choice-based mediums. We're giving power to your students and um, we're just really setting them up for success, but under a framework. So we're always just giving them a theme and a framework to work with, and then we're letting a lot of the decision-making within the art project and what it might look like, we're giving that power to the kids. So yes, the end products will be a little bit different from what you might typically expect, but oh my goodness, the learning that will be happening in your classroom will be absolutely unreal and kids will really have just a lot of engagement a lot of play and just so much happiness and you can sit back chill with the kids help them navigate and yeah that's about it so let's dive on in to some spring flexible choice-based art making ideas you're listening to the miss artastic podcast inspiration for art teachers Here's your host, Kathleen McGivern. Okay, so I am for sure one of those people that gets spring fever. Um, It is a long, dark winter here. And by the time after, you know, months and months and months of just rain, sometimes snow, Um, once I see the birds migrating back, my friend, I'm so excited. You can just feel the world awakening. Like you can just look around if, and this is, I guess, dependent on your seasons, but here we have very distinct seasons and I can just feel the world awakening. Little buds of crocuses and tulips and daffodils are all peeking through just the very start and the trees are all just getting those teeny tiny little buds that will become leaves eventually. And I have some friends that migrate to my yard. For instance, I have Martha and Charles and Alice, my mallards. They come a little bit early um, just because this is kind of their home pond um, at my yard. They come early in the beginning of January, so it's kind of cold still for that. But then at the end of the month, um, I start seeing Earl Grey, the heron that usually hangs out over here. And then um, just now we get, funny enough, sometimes we get these little guys, they look like sandpipers. I think they must be in the same family, but they're called killdeer. And they just, they just announced their arrival the other night. And I'm like sitting there and it's the middle of the night. It's probably like 10 o'clock and it's dark because it goes dark quite early in the evening here um, during the winter. So I hear them screaming outside and I'm like, oh, I heard something. And I go outside and sure enough, there's the killdeer. Well, I couldn't see them, but sure you can hear them. They fly around screaming. I can hear them just flying through this valley anyways. So they're so funny, crazy, crazy little guys. And so they're back. And then that means that sometime this month, I think the Rufus hummingbird will be back and so will wood ducks. So I'm excited for that. I really love spring because I forget that all my friends are gone and it's really exciting when they come back. Anywho. So we're going to be diving into some choice-based spring art lesson ideas that you can use in your amazing classroom. And my friend, I'm so excited about this because I got some super cute spring art activities that are ready to sprout for you. (laughs) All right, so the first one is collage. So some spring flower collage. So the first spring art idea includes providing students the opportunity to research either individually or as a class some flowers that often grow or bloom in the spring and this could include spring bulbs or maybe you want to make it more relevant to where you are. So once they create either sketch notes, quick sketches, or a written list of flowers, they can then create a page of reference images of some flowers they like. To speed up the process or make it easier for lower grades, you can definitely provide a page of reference images of flowers for each student's 
each of your students, have them circle or color the images or flowers they like on that page to make their thinking visible. So I've been trying to focus a lot on making students thinking visible in the context of art. So one way we can make it visible is that they could color or circle the flowers that they're interested in, the ones that are piquing their inspiration, their interest. But um, also they could always write their thinking. So for older students, they can flip over the paper and write some thinking on the back of what flowers they're interested in, why they're liking that one, what makes it, in why they think it's interesting, all those kinds of things. They could put it on the back just in note form um, just to make their thinking visible. It's not for marking. We're not assessing thinking. We are trying to encourage the thinking process and we want to make it visible. And you could also model this to show them what thinking would look like in t the context of your art class. Okay, so finally talk with your students about what collage is. So this is where your teaching part will come in. You'll talk about what collage is. You can show examples of collage even by famous artists. So that way you can bring in contemporary art or art history into the class uh, or into the lesson, right? So you can, you can reference other things. Even though it's a spring themed collage, you can still nail some of the other curricular competencies or content. Um, by referencing and talking about contemporary artists, looking at examples of collage, you can even make a PowerPoint or watch a YouTube video, whatever you want to do, however you want to instruct it, you can tie this all in together. So yeah, so introduce them to collage, um, introduce them to an assortment of art making mediums and materials, and then show them ways in a demonstration, show them ways that they can use the mediums, not necessarily you making a collage that they will then replicate, but you show them ways that mediums can be used, what they might look like in little samples. And they can even be making their own little samples um, while you're doing this. So like even separating a piece of paper into tiny little grids, right? If you have a grid of your paper, or you can even provide that for them, or fold it up into a grid and then unfold it and they, in each of the fold lines or spaces, they can make little samples of what a crayon would look like, oil pastel would look like, drips of watercolor paint, or whatever it is, texture rubbing with wax crayon, fabric stamps, or even gluing fabric onto there, or tissue paper, whatever that is. You can show them ways the mediums can be used and then explain to them that they're going to be using your own choice of mediums and materials to create a collage of a spring flower. So they're going to create a spring flower in a collage style using their choice of mediums. Now you can dictate what mediums are going to use. So you can pre set out, uh, or if you already have a maker space, just let them go for that. But, um, you can pre set out a range of art making mediums. And for me, my friend, I am a huge believer of using recycled mediums as art supplies. I don't mean go buy like, feathers and foamy bits, not necessary. You re keep a collection of recycled materials like tissue paper, wrapping paper, magazines, and you can just rip out instead of like, you know, doodling on pages to cover up things that you don't want them to see. Just rip out those pages, rip it out, rip it out, tear it out, um, and then put the rest of the magazine there. Um, and then, yeah, so you could have, uh, scrap paper like I just like to keep a scrap paper bin you know for all the bits from art projects that are um just still good they're still good sizes but not big they're not complete papers anymore like even the smallest bits are perfect right because that could always be used in like a mosaic later down the road I like to keep cardboard all kinds of cardboard especially cereal box and pop bottle cardboard cases those it's like a nice strong cardboard but is still thin enough to cut <laughs> easily love it um all that kind of stuff bubble wrap fabric scraps um if you have a, a textile or sewing class at your school ask the teacher for the scraps of fabric that is left over like the little bits that are cut away from projects those little bits are perfect for art supplies just fyi um even woodwork whatever ask for the little bits that they were going to toss. It becomes your free art supplies. Okay, so then 
uh, I'll make this available and then kids can create a spring flower collage. Okay, moving on. Next is a spring bulb flower sculpture. So similar to the first idea, you guys can research as a class different flowers that grow as a bulb and become blooming beauties in the spring. So have students make a sketch note or visual note of the flowers as you introduce different bulb type flowers to your classroom. Kids can both draw the flower and write its name on paper. Next, you're going to provide a page with reference images of the flowers you introduced to your students to reinforce their learning and to model the steps of the creative process. After, provide a range of art making mediums to students to create paper spring flower sculptures. Students can use papers, cardboard, and other mediums to make beautiful sculptures of a Oh, sorry, a beautiful paper sculpture of a flower of their choosing. Now they could either just do the flower only, but you could also have them make the bulb. And that could also be like the support that holds the rest of the flower because it is a sculpture, right? You have to think about how it's going to stand up. And one way of doing that would be maybe making a bulb. And the bulb could also be a different medium. Like maybe you want to make that the like plaster scene or um, air dry clay or paper mache, I don't know, whatever you feel like, you do you, my friend. Um, so yeah, you need to make a beautiful paper sculpture of their flower of their choosing. And then again, you can also allow students to add other mediums to it. So it's not just paper, but you can add other mediums to it. So for instance, if you drew out and cut out some flower petals, you could use wax crayons to add lines and color variation and texture to the petal before assembling it into a flower. And this is going to be a, a great way to add both color and variety to their artwork. Okay, and finally, spring observational drawings with choice mediums. So finally, you can allow your students the opportunity to go out on a nature walk or into the schoolyard to look at, so obviously as a class, but to look at what the world looks like during the spring. So if you have a clear spring in your area, then this would be something you could do. You could make this as simple as you want from allowing students to choose any art mediums and make sketches of three things they see. Or you could blow it up and make it complicated to making it a full plein air art painting lesson for your older students. So middle school, high school level, right? Um, so observational art making is an important skill for our, all artists, no matter how little or how much experience in art making one has. The changes that occur in the world as it transforms from winter to spring is a beautiful thing to observe and both you and your students will enjoy and benefit from the immersive natural experience and breath of fresh air. For more spring art lesson ideas, please make sure that you visit my Teachers Pay Teachers store, Ms. Artastic. Simply search Ms. Artastic on TPT. If you look on the left side of the page, there is a categories column. And if you scroll down and click spring, it's going to bring you to all my lovely spring art resources, including my spring roll and draws, my spring um, art activities. And I also have some art history infused spring art lessons, such as a Picasso duck, a Ted Harrison butterfly, and a Van Gogh vase of tulips art lessons. Art lesson all pre-planned with all your assessment rubrics, reflections, and so much more. And of course, I have many more art lessons in addition to those, including just director draws, coloring pages, more art lessons. Everything you can think of, find it at Smizzertastic on TPT. Well, my friend, lovely friend, that is it for this episode. Oh my goodness. Again, have fun with spring. Get outside, into nature, plant some flowers, even on a patio or in your windowsill. You can make a pot, add some seeds. I highly recommend basil, parsley, all of that above stuff. Um, oregano grows amazing in pots. So does mint. But do not plant mint out in your garden. It will take over. Oh my goodness. That stuff goes crazy. But hey, wouldn't that be a nice lovely thing to have on in a, like, a nice pot? I totally recommend you do that, honestly. Plant it now. It's so easy to grow. It needs no maintenance. And then you can have some fresh herbs 
for your food. Oh, yes. Mmm, I love gardening. Anywho, um, yeah, I will see you in a couple weeks, and we will be talking about St. Patrick's Day. This is Ms. Artastic, signing out.